Hey, Fit Heads. Today we have Don Saladino, a celebrity trainer and an all around very insightful person on fitness, health in general. I mean, we started out where we were being a little controversial on CrossFit and then I hit record. So, I mean, it was controversy from the get go. It was, yeah. he was talking about whoop versus aura versus that brain monitor thing. I had never yeah, heard of Omega that. Omega wave. What? Omega red. Omega <laughs> wave. You look like uh, Vision with the Mind Stone right there. <laughs> it was yeah. awesome. Speaking of superheroes, he also trains regular people into looking and acting and becoming superheroic physiques. That was really fun. Yeah, <laughs> you're just a ball of energy. That was that was the cool part about it. I was, I was sneaky, sort of inspired by what he's talking about obviously the content and the how to build up strength how to build up your physique but it's also fun to talk to people or hear people who are just like balls of energy <laughs> absolutely energy and opinion like he had he had a stance on everything versus being like mm, love yeah it. i know welcome to total fitness serious fitness for not so serious people so are we so on crossfit <laughs> Are we talking? Are we dumping on CrossFit? I got no problem with that if you guys want to. Well, I mean, I, we already missed some of the magic, but. <laughs> well, no, I mean, I listen, I'm, I'm not dumping on CrossFit. I'm just dumping on poor coaching. So it's not CrossFit. It's like if someone asked me, like, do you like restaurants? I'm like, well, that's a ridiculous question. That's like saying, like, it was, I like good restaurants. I don't like shitty restaurants. You know, unfortunately, 85, 90% of the CrossFit boxes were crap because there was no there was no method to what was going on to the coaching. They're not taking into any consideration the individual coming in. It's too much about community. And when I say that, people, well, how can it be too much about community? When the majority of people are getting hurt or they're coming in banged up, I mean, that's, that shows me that that training is not working. Like training should get you into better shape overall. Like whatever your goal is, like if your goal is powerlifting, you should be getting in better shape to lift heavier weight. The, granted, there's a cost of doing business when a guy's going for a 3,000 pound total. We understand that. And there's other things involved in it that I don't necessarily follow or believe in, like performance enhancing substances to each his own. But um, I, think, I think there's an irresponsibility taking place from a coach who's going to come in and take a student and just say, all right, let's just start jerking weight when you're not taking the consideration their T-spine mobility or whether they have external rotation in their shoulders or whether their core can even support that movement. So that's the problem that I have with it. But that's the problem I have with all coaching. So, right. you know, yeah, again, am I picking on CrossFit or am I picking on poor coaching? I'm picking on poor coaching. Right. Yeah. I mean, I have my L1 and I feel completely unprepared to, to train anyone, but I am able to, right? It's like, yeah. Yeah. But I think the question is, is are they, are they, are they getting into a better place with you? So I don't care if you're level one or you're, or, or you're a weekend, you're, you're, you're a weekend coach, meaning you went and you took some sort of an ACE certification and got certified in three days. If you work with your clients and the majority of them out there are getting in a better shape and, and you're improving the way they move, the way that they respond to life in general, I think you're doing a good job. Could you do things better? Absolutely. But the problem I have is when things start diminishing. So someone comes into me you're doing soul cycle. I'm like, I love soul cycle. I hate training. I'm like, do I like soul cycle? I've taken it. They're entertaining. Do I like someone sitting on a bike five days a week for 45 minutes to an hour? The answer is no. We sit enough and don't complain to me when your back's hurting and your hips are hurting. What? It's a sitting what? workout. I never thought about that. I was just like, think oh, about it. Like we like right now for the next hour, this sucks. Like, look what we're, look what we're doing. Like we're sitting for the next hour. This is, this is terrible for us. Let's be clear. Like I, I understand getting someone on an Airdyne bike like I have in the background and trying to do high intensity training with the Airdyne bike because there is a, um, there's, there's a low barrier to f up on that. <laughs> it's like, it's pretty tough to f up an air bike. Like get on and go hard. Like get on the true form treadmill. Like you're going to be a disaster. Like it's, it's strength is a skill. Like that thing's a skill. Like you got to run a certain way to be able to put a maximal amount of output in. So you know, I will get someone on the bike for those short bursts, but do I need people doing these long, like strenuous, like steady state cardio sessions for an hour on an air bike? You can do it. I think there's better modalities out there in my opinion. Yeah. Well, do you agree with steady state cardio in general? I do. Um, absolutely. And it's, you have different energy systems. So, I mean, different energy systems should be assigned to an individual all into accordance of um, their central nervous system and how they're recovering. So you can have someone that's completely fried. Max, I can turn around, I can hook you up to an Omega wave system over the next week and I can turn around and I can actually be able to measure 
your true readiness. Now, if, if you're waking up every day and I'm seeing that you're fried from training, from high intensity training, and you want to do more high intensity training, well, you're going to get in worse shape. You're not going to get in better shape. But if the goal is to get waste out of the body, to improve that fat burning effect, to get your heart rate pumping and moving so we get all that crap out, like, yeah, you need steady state cardio. Like, I don't believe in doing one type of cardio. Like, we need HIIT training. We need minimum intensive, uh, intensity interval training, and we need steady state cardio. The problem is, is that most people who think they know HIIT training, they're really doing medium, in, uh, medium yes. um, interval training. What's that? If you're not pukey, it's not HIIT. That's what I always say. Well, I mean, you could be pukey. I mean, listen, yeah. I mean, in, in a way, it doesn't sound too scientific, but like, I, think of, <laughs> I think of HIIT training as like your maximal level of output. Like, how long can you maintain a high, like a full-blown sprint for? Probably four to six seconds. But does that mean a 400 meter sprint isn't hit training? It is. You're not, you're not doing a true 400 at 100% and going in the next 30 to 60 seconds. It's not happening. It's not happening. <laughs> Let's be very clear on that. Max, if you and I were to go on a track right now and I was to say, Max, I've got my friend here. He's got a machete. He's faster than you and I. And he's literally going to ch chop us up. If, 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 if we let him catch you, you're going to be, and you know, he's crazy. You're going to run your ass off. All right. And then if he vanishes, like you're going to need rest. <laughs> it's like, you're not going to be like, all right, we're going to go in 30 seconds. That's ridiculous. The, the thing that drives me nuts is these terrible classes with these instructors who they just want to get their work to rest ratio. They want their work to be so overbearing than their rest. So when you're doing a class, that's 45 seconds on 10 seconds off. That's not hit training. That's not HIIT training. You can't maintain a maximal level of output and you can't recover enough to where you can repeat it. So if I was to put a heart rate monitor on you guys and I was to go 45 on 15 off for 45 minutes, when I look at your heart rate at the end of the workout, it'd probably be more in a steady state range. You'd probably be in that 120 to 150 beats a minute heart rate, unless you're terribly deconditioned or you just have a heart uh, by, by uh, you know, genetics, you just happen to have a, you know, a high, um, you know, you, you can hit a high heart rate barrier. I know when I'm on the, I play a lot of ice hockey when I'm on the ice and I am freaking flying, like just all out, like my, my heart rate, I'm lucky if I get it to 170. And I know people who can get on the step mill and do 170. I'm like, are you crazy? Like I, I just, Jeanette, I just can't get there. It's just impossible. He's so, um, what's that? He's too fit. No, it's not. I don't think it's got anything to be too, too fit. I think it's got to do with we have specific, but we're all made differently. We have specific barriers. Like if you, like if I'm maybe Rich Froning can get his heart rate to 200. Like it's, it's, yeah, he's a pretty fit guy, but maybe that's just his barrier. I don't know. Like I've, I've, I've no idea. It, it's, there's so many different ways to measure conditioning um, that most people don't think about. People are just generalizing things. I, I think they're just getting in and they're like, let's just get people tired and let's get them sweating and let's get them in a community environment. And that's, and that's good enough. And honestly, is that better than sitting on the couch? The answer to me, the answer is yes, unless you're putting them in the hospital. <laughs> it's like, then, then we have a real problem. This is fun. Okay, so the, wait, what is the, the perfect interval ratio? Training, Tell us your I secret. That. I don't know. I, again, I think it depends on what the goal is and I think it depends on your conditioning and you know, I mean, the right way to answer that question is you really can't, you know, I mean, what are you, what are you training for? Um, I did a really cool uh, program. It was an adaptive training. I'm um, sorry. It was an adaptive running training plan. Omega wave got me onto it. And I was probably one of the first people to utilize it. And it was pretty special because you wake up every day. And what I like about Omega wave is it shows you um, whether you need to be training power, strength, endurance, skill, like what should your focus be that day, according to your readiness. So you would wake up and they created this adaptive running plan where it asks, actually spit back to you based off of your readiness, what your training should be that day for a 5k program. So like I did this program where I trained for a 5k and then it would spit to you. All right, today's a steady state day. You need to hold heart rate between X and Y for uh, 45 to 65 minutes or you, oh, guess what today? Like you're, you're ready to go and it's time to start implementing some in intervals in and we're going to be doing a 10 minute warm up, And the next thing you know, you're doing intervals for, you know, 55, 60 minutes. It, it, it all, I mean, this really, the, the right way to answer it's based off of readiness, but you know, what are the most accurate ways to measure readiness? I mean, I think Omega wave probably is um, a lot of these trackers out there now, I think a lot of them are pretty weak. I, I, I happen to love, yeah, I happen to love aura. I'm, 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 um, 
I, yes, exactly. God, look at you. You're, you're like, you're like a machine. Um, I've been using Aura for about three years. I've used Whoop. I've used, I, I've worked for Whoop. Like I, I've really kind of did a deep dive on this stuff um, over the last probably five years. So um, plus I'm friends with this guy, Brandon Marcello, and I like kicking ideas around to him because he's a, he's a researcher in reference to recovery. He has worked with the military, the Olympic committee and stuff like that. So he'd always give me some cool data on it. So it's fun to interview him every once in a while. He'd be a cool guy for you guys to bring on your podcast. But um. Yeah, I mean the the, well, the, the right interval is just a general question. What what's that? What's your favorite device then? Um, wearables definitely Aura. Um, hands down, I think it's the most accurate too. Um, anything on the wrist, right? Right, right now, I mean, even Apple Watch. I think there's too much discrepancy um, with heart rate. Uh, I'm not saying that the heart rate isn't accurate, but I know during the day it's very it can be very inaccurate, and when you're wearing things like Whoop. And you have a golfer upstairs and in my, when I say upstairs, meaning in my simulators, I, I had a gym for 15 years in the city and I had golf simulators and, um, you know, they'd be hitting balls and their heart rate would be at 170. And then I'd have them doing intervals and their heart rate would be at 150. So I'm like, all right. And they're like, oh, well, you know, the, the, the wrist wearables aren't a hundred percent. Well, you're right. They're not a hundred percent, but if you're trying to determine HRV and you're trying to determine readiness, if it's inaccurate throughout the day, how are you giving an accurate reading? When I turn around and I did a, I, I, I deadlifted one day 560. I, I, did a, I, I did a PR. I pulled off the floor and then I had a hockey game that night and I was flying all day long and it said my strain was 14. And then I went out on the golf course the next day and I walked 18 holes and it said my strain was at 18. And I'm like, really? <laughs> <laughs> like, like, seriously? Like, are you really going to tell me that right now? It's bull. So I think, and I even met with, um, who was it? Uh, a polar recently. And they sent me a chest strap and a wristwatch. And I'm like, why are you sending both? They're like, oh, you know, the chest strap's better. Yeah. And I'm is. like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> it totally is. I switched to chest strap for sure. Yeah, they're I way mean, better. You see me wearing these, but I'm I like First Beat, actually. If you guys check out First Beat, um, they have a really cool um, interface and a really cool program. And they actually, um, you'll, you'll throw a strap on. You can leave your phone open, but like, I'll put the strap on when I have a hockey game and then I'll come back and I can actually look at my shifts. And I could see where my heart rate, like if I go out on the ice and I have say 10 shifts in a game or 12 shifts in a game, I could see each shift. I could see each spike, like 10 or 12, let's say it's 10. And I could see each shift and I could see where my heart rate got and where my recovery was. And then it can actually give me an aerobic and anaerobic score. So I can see was, 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 was the game more aerobic based? Was it more anaerobic based? And then you can really start tailoring workouts around what um, qualities it is that you want to improve. Wow. Okay. Sweet. First beat's so cool. Is that what you're working on right now? Is like improving your performance in hockey? No, um, I just, I just, I just uh, separated my shoulder three weeks ago. So I'm, I, I'm, I'm going to go back. Yeah, no, it, it, it's fine now. And, um, but, um, I'm, I'm going back to playing, uh, this, this Tuesday, I'm going snowboarding this weekend and then I'm going out to, uh, Montana in two weeks to do a little extreme boarding with a guide, which will be fun. So I, you know, I, I like having, um, I like doing that stuff. It's, um, it's a lot of fun. Uh, fortunately, after my um, my AC separation, I was able to train like two or three days later. We just, I got on the phone with my buddy, Dr. Jordan Shallow, and we, um, I saw my other buddy who's an orthopedist, Bill, Bill Healy, and we didn't think it was too bad so I could continue to train around that and get that scat moving and keep my body moving. I felt like my recovery has been incredible. So I've actually been training all around it and have improved mobility and my body's feeling great from a recovery standpoint. I think that's a bad, I think it's a bad, um, if you don't have to avoid training when you get injured, I think it's good not to. So um, you just got to be smart about it. I recommend most people, if they, if they, unfortunately, if you do get hurt, I think that's the time to find a physical therapist who's a strength coach to come in, assess you, in a, and build a program for you that you can do that's safe, but that's going to help um, from a recovery standpoint. And are you just sleeping like 15 hours a night? No, no. I mean, I'm sleeping normal. It, it's fine. I, it's tough to sleep on my left side. Um, <laughs> it's yeah. like, it's, it sucks, but, um, That's I mean, good. it's been good. You know, I, I, I press this week. What's that? Be, AC joint separation can be a very, very, do you know what that is? Ali? It's a uh, collarbone and your scalp. It it's like, I, I, so if I was wearing bad. a sleep shirt, it'd be better, but it's like this little knob right in here. So yeah, yeah. Uh, it can be incredibly painful. It's really easy for people. I think it's like a, it's like an active person's injury. I know that's so <laughs> not to break. It, it, it is what it is. It's like, it is what it is, but yeah, that's, you know, cool. work around it. So this Omega wave you're talking about, I haven't even heard of it. I guess it's for like 
trainer. It's not a wearable. Yeah. It's it, it's not a wearable d device. It's it's a device you actually have to hook a sensor up to your head and you got to hook a sensor up to your wrist and a heart rate monitor on and you got to lay there still for three minutes. So it's like, yeah, a lot of people aren't going to want to do that. But I, I think um, they're going to do really good things. If you ask me, like my favorite wearable is this because I think it's giving you the most important data. Like if we fix sleep, we fix so much. If our sleep improves, then our readiness improves. Yeah. So a lot of other, a lot of that other garbage that some of these other devices are giving it's it's like 99 percent of the people aren't even using it I, I think where it becomes interesting is that people will now start thinking a little bit differently and maybe having that second cocktail because they're going to see their score get affected right and they're like oh shit. like every time i have more than one drink i'm in the red and that's yeah. bad and like yeah. suddenly that's pulling them <laughs> back but but where they where these companies are kind a lot of these companies and, and these guys i, I mean they're I, I love aura they're fantastic um um, I, I've, I've truly been able to um, skew numbers, even with things like CBD, I've been able to use blue light blockers and, and see that, yeah, maybe they don't work. And there's so many things I'm able to, <laughs> when you, when you become in tune with your body, the littlest thing can, can, can affect something. And when you do it over and over, it's like, it's really hard to spend a month on some, on this th sort of thing and be like, I got it. Like it takes years because your patterns change, seasons change, stress levels change. Like you're suddenly wearing this through COVID. All the numbers are going to be different. Everyone's stressed. Everyone's, you know, and then I'm not waking up at 4 a.m. anymore to go to work. I'm sleeping in. So that's, that's a factor in, in, in a good favor, but everything is getting thrown off now. So I really believe in wearing these things. Um, it takes time and um, they're good as long as you're not driving yourself nuts, but you don't even feel like this is on. Like with Whoop, I would wear and I, I couldn't swim. So I, I was, I was a, a swimmer in high school and I love swimming and I would go out and want to do laps and you start swimming and the, and the strap flips off. So I'm like, all right, well, that sucks also. So, you know, this is, this is I'm, I'm married. I, I, I took my wedding ring off and I put this on and it's like, it doesn't look any different, right? No, it, it's, what, it's what you do, but I don't, be, I don't want to be walking around with like wristwatches that don't even tell time. It's like, what the fuck? Like, <laughs> I'm wearing a watch that doesn't even tell time. It's kind of funny, actually. Well, you got the sun. You can just sort of ballpark. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> you know me. I mean, Aura has just uh, introduced AAD, automatic activity de detection. Have you gotten it yet? No. Um, wait, wait, wait. Maybe, maybe I know about it. Are you referring to when you just start like working out or being active and it picks up on it? Yeah. And it's like, I hey, thought they were doing that for a while. Walk? I mean, I only just got the update, I guess, because it just started working for me. No, I, 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 I saw that a started. while ago, I thought. Yeah, I mean, I never thought of this as an activity tracker <sighs> until they started doing that. It was more just like sleep recovery situation. I think this thing, I think this thing's awesome. I think they've got, um, I think this has got a lot of legs. Um, well, Whoop just got our military now. Max told me about this this thing. I had to look it up there. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I mean, I know Will. He's a super nice guy, and I think their marketing's been great. And you know, hopefully, he you know sells him for and a billion still dollars. This dump. I love it. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, it's not. I'm not. I'm not shitting on them. I mean, I, 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 I'm just. You know, I'm. I'm. Listen, I'm. This is what I do for a living. I got to speak through. I got to speak through my, uh, my, my, my honest lens. You know, I, I, I got paid by that company for a, a while and, and um, for a while, six months, it wasn't, it wasn't a lot. And I, um, it gave me an opportunity to work with it. It just wasn't for me. I mean, that's all I'm saying. It wasn't for, for me. I mean, for everything down to wearing a band that becomes soggy after you shower and I'm walking around and it starts smelling. It's like, it's just, there's things about it. I just didn't, I just wasn't a fan of every time I have a watch on, I'm like looking at it for the time and I'm like. It doesn't take the time. And then when I brought it up, like, why don't you guys put a step tracker on that? That would be interesting. They're like, well, we're a high performance, you know, de device and it should be for high performance. I'm like, well, not really. Cause it's not giving you a high performance reading on a, on a heart rate. So how can it be a high performance device? Uh, that's what I don't understand. So it's not me shitting on the company. It's just, uh, listen, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not an influencer. I've been a coach for 23 years of my life. Like I take what I do. I love what I do. I take it seriously. I'm a student. I'm always learning. But I think me not giving an honest opinion is me doing, at first, it's a level of dishonesty. And I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm doing others an injustice. Like people trust me and they listen to what I, what I say. I just signed a, a, a supplement deal today with a company called Thorn Research. I am proud, like, 
don't don't tell the owners. I mean, I would have done it for free. I mean, I'm I'm proud of this. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm I'm proud of this product, and I'm proud of this company. Like they they've they've been doing this for 30 years, and they put a lot behind the quality of their products, and they put a lot behind the research. And it's not just let's just buy shit off the shelves and just hope it hope it sticks. Like it'll be fun now to give test kits to my challengers, and it'll be fun to have doctors on the back end being able to answer questions. And like that to me is really interesting. I feel like we're 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 doing better by people. If someone going to throw the whoop band on and stop drinking six drinks a night, then I, in my opinion, it's doing, it's doing the job, but you know, is it, is it a high performance product or is it, I, I don't know, maybe they've improved it. Ah, you keep bringing up drinking. We ask every one of our guests, only one question for everyone. That's always the same is like, how do you incorporate drinking and your training? Sounds like you already have an um, Drinking is like, it's weird with drinking. I'll it's not something I depend on. It's not something I need to do every week. Like I can go months without having a drink or this weekend I'm going snowboarding with my wife and kids and, you know, we'll, we'll definitely, you know, it's her birthday weekend. So her and I are definitely throw back a, a bunch of IPAs and hang out and, you know, just whatever. I mean, that to me is cool. So I, I, I think when I do it, I really enjoy it because I don't do it much. But um, it just doesn't fit from like an uh, from a from a hormonal and, and from an aesthetic standpoint. It doesn't fit what I do. Like I I have like there's my life is much about performance as it is taking my shirt off and being able to be on the cover of Muscle and Fitness. Right? It's, it sounds crazy, but yeah, no, that's that's part of my job. That's part of what I that's part of what I do. So if if I'm not maintaining a level of body fat all year long. And I do get a call to do something and I can't be ready in two or three weeks. There's, there's a problem. There's missed opportunity. When, when I was actually, um, my buddy S Sadiq Hatsavik brought up the other day that, um, he was Olympia competitor, but when I got the cover, it was right around the time when he was getting the cover and he wasn't ready. And then I was ready. And it was like, you, you gotta be ready for these sort of things. Everything now with, with digital is you gotta be ready to take your shirt off and just shoot. And it's like, <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I, I, I try not to do it that much, but, um, you know, when, when you do it, you really enjoy it. So it's not that like, oh, the 30 days leading up to men's health, you cut it out. It's like, you're basically not even. You're just well, yeah. I mean, I mean, look, put it this way. If, um, I mean, men, men's health, I had five, I had five weeks to prep for their cover. So I, I, I think, yeah, for five weeks, I didn't have a drink and yeah. Mike, does my diet really change? Like I probably dial in my macros a little bit more avoid cheat meals and I'll, I'll lose seven pounds, eight pounds. It's not a lot It's just water weight, but every week it's like, Oh, shit, I didn't have that. Like their veins, their veins start popping out. It's like, yeah, that's, what's yeah, kind of yeah. cool about it. you have to trust the process. I think when people are going into, you know, cuts or, or photo shoots, like it's important to me when I shot the cover of muscle and fitness, um, it was important to me that night I had a hockey game and I literally, after the shoot, I, I had a meal and I went, I played in a hockey game and my performance didn't hinder. I didn't do a water cut. I didn't do no carbs up until I was eating 300 grams of carbs up until the date of my shoot, but it's trusting the process. I was at 500 grams of carbs four weeks earlier. And then I dropped to 300 so grams and I lost a lot of weight, a lot of weight, eight, eight, eight pounds. And then I just kind of kept it there. I didn't make any drastic changes. And then every week it was like, all right, this is happening. Trust the process. I think a big problem is, is no one trusts the process. The second they, they start something like, what's next? What, what's next? I'm like, this is the human body. There's nothing next. You keep yeah. training, <laughs> you keep next. getting rest, you keep being patient and you keep allowing change to take place. And I, I it's, that takes a level of maturity seriously, yeah. because it's like, I, you know, I have 500 plus challengers on my challenge every month. And I'll have, I just had a guy the other day, 60 years old, 60. He dropped his body fat from 20 through, through, I think it was a DEXA scan, from 20 to 18, or it was like 18 to 15, and he put on three pounds. Like, it's a fucking golden ticket right, right there. He actually dropped body fat, and he put on, and he put on muscle, right? It's hard to do. Okay, but it's, it's proof. It's very, it's very hard to do, right? And he's asking me, what's next? So if someone's going to say that's impossible, they're, they're full of shit and they shouldn't be in fitness. It's not impossible. It is possible. It can happen. Have I seen a 60 year old person do that? It's very rare. It's very rare, but that just shows how type A this guy is with his training and with everything else that he was doing. But don't ask me what's next. I'm like, keep your foot on the gas, brother. Let's not change anything. <laughs> Once it stalls out and you start getting, how do you feel? I feel great. My energy level's high. Um, um, are, you, are you happy right now? I'm having a great time. Why are we going to change anything? Like you, you just answered your question. Let's throw in tricks, right? Let's throw in little hacks when you feel like things are plateauing and you're like, all right, I'm a little bored now. Don't do it when things are good. 
You're in a grace period right now. It's like Shangri-La. Everything's good. Yeah, you ah. Dialed it in perfectly. Jeez, that's awesome. Hmm. So then, wait, dialing in your macros sounds like it's just cutting back carbs. Uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's it's just it's just tightening some things up, like where I might be. Man, I don't know. Like right now, I'm probably around 430 grams of carbs a day, about 280 grams of protein, about 90 grams of fat. Like if I had a shoot coming up, like I would just probably bag my my one protein shake I'm having a day, avoid any alcohol, avoid any um, cheat meals, and I might drop the carbs to about 300, probably, and just level off there and just keep it very boring. And just keep training really good and sleep really good and just allow nature to take its course. Could I do it faster? Could I get maybe a little bit tighter if I started doing these water loads and, you know, where you're pumping water up and then you're, you're dehydrating? Yeah, but I also think it's a little bit, in my opinion, this is just, I think it's a little, it's like I don't walk around there all year long. You know, like I want to be up there and I want to exemplify something that I, I, I kind of do and I stick with all, all year long. It's just my belief. So... Um, are there guys up there that might be a little bit tighter? Sure. But I'm playing hockey that night. I'm not, I'm not, you know, I'm not turning around and rolling up into a ball and, you know, you know, going to cheesecake factory for the next 20 hours and just, you know, picking out, like, I don't, I don't, it's not necessary for me. Yeah. And also way healthier. And also there's Photoshop. Like, why are we even try? <laughs> there, I mean, there, there is, I mean, but it's, it's so, it's so obvious to see. I mean, yeah, lighting definitely helps, but, um, yeah, unfortunately, like you'll see people uh, get, get, I mean, I've seen people go to shoots who look like, shit, or I've had editors and friends of mine who've told me like, this guy showed up, he didn't even have an ad. <laughs> it's like, then you can tell, like, you're like, oh, okay. But you can, you can tell, like, there's certain guys, like, like I give a lot of credit. Some of my friends who, um, who are competitors, you know, when they're, you know, what they have to do to diet down. Like, I don't know if anyone's, uh, you guys have ever gone through like a real cut like that. It's brutal. Oh my God. Oh my, I've done a couple of them and it's we, brutal. I mean, I Max, have you done it? I in college, so we oh. cut like all the time and we would do it the exact wrong way. Those water cuts, I did exactly what you're talking about. Oh, it's, about. it's brutal. You want to, you probably just couldn't even function half the time. You're like, uh. You can't lift your arms and yeah. you're just walking around. You're like, how am I supposed to compete at a relatively high level? How am I supposed to do anything? I don't have any energy. I don't have any uh. strength. It make me dislike the thing that I like. Like I love this sport, and now this other thing is making me hate the sport. It was just—it's so dumb. I never got—I never understood it, and I wasn't a wrestler. That's why I don't understand it. But I, it's like, why, why? Why do we want to get smaller to wrestle in a class? Like, let's just get bigger and stronger, and let's I just. I think the you know, idea, in theory, the idea is kind of what you're talking about. You just like tighten everything up. You don't have cheat meals. You're careful about your stuff, but the, it's just way easier to cheat it and so you get on the scale and you weigh whatever and then you get off and you're like okay i did it i succeeded but you didn't succeed because that really wasn't your goal your goal isn't to weigh a certain weight your goal is to like be in really good shape and have energy and strength and stuff like that but it was just it's just a lot easier and where'd you wrestle trinity college in connecticut oh shit. we were like neighbor i mean i went to sacred heart in connecticut oh wow we're like trinity neighbors. was trinity was close wasn't it hartford yeah all right, it wasn't that close, but still, yeah, I was familiar with Hartford. Oh, all right, I was up in so, Hartford a bunch. Connecticut's not that big. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I mean, we would do stuff all the time, and it is arguably, if you're a lot bigger than somebody, it is easier. But that only lasts for the forty seconds of you can expend that energy, and then you're out of energy because you don't have anything in your body. Well, but you like, were able to go out after you weigh in, though. You were able to go get fuel in your body, though, right? You were able to go drink water, and you were able to, to eat, usually right? have about an hour before like, you have to wrestle. Yeah, but other sports, like I remember, very sort of in my mind, famously, the crew, the crew coach was like, "Oh yeah, you're cutting weight. Yeah, I used to cut weight all the time. Friday night weigh in, Sunday afternoon race. It's the worst." And I'm like. <laughs> Like, what? Are you kidding me? That's You're going right to man. Wendy's, man. <laughs> I'd be at Wendy's with a frosty, like like carving up. Like you kidding me? Yeah, exactly. So That's you know, awesome. sometimes depending on how, the timing, it sucks. You only have like an hour. Right. It's like a it's a crappier it's a crappy solution to a also crappy problem. It's like how do we set up this sport? Big guys against big guys and big guys against little guys. I, I also think it's it's pretty dang. I mean, it's pretty it's pretty scary too. Like I don't like a, if my son ever decided to wrestle and 
you know, if he had to do weight cuts, like, yeah, it's part of the sport. I, I get it. I would prefer him not to, <laughs> you know, it's like if they kind of banned it and they did away with it, I would, I would, um, I'd be fine with it. But then I guess people would be kind of hacking it and trying to cheat it on the side and figuring out ways to beat the system. So whatever it is what it is. Um, I wanted to ask about this and I don't want to equate the two because we're talking about cuts, but, uh, intermittent fasting, how do you feel about that? Um, <sighs> Um, IF, um, no, it, it's, listen, I think there's a place for it. I, I think for the majority of the population out there, I, I take a food as medicine approach, like nutrition, we should be consuming nutrition. That's the best way to detox our body. It's like, I believe detoxing our bodies through, you know, organic proteins, through organic fruits and vegetables, through water, through sleep, through sweating. Like these are the best ways to detox our body. And I think when, when, when the general population starts using, um, intermittent fasting as a tool to make themselves think that they're rebounding from a really bad weekend. Um, I don't agree with that. So let me, let me give you an example. Like you have a client that goes away to, you know, Las Vegas and they're eating shit the whole time and they're drinking booze and they're blowing lines and they, you know, they end up, you know, uh, you know getting on a, on a red eye now and they're, and they're, and they're drunk and they've drank probably eight ounces of water in three days and they get back and they're like, I'm just not going to eat. Like you've <laughs> already, you right. Right. <laughs> Sound familiar guys? <laughs> no, like, like the, the problem I have, like, listen, putting aside all the other crap you put in your body that you shouldn't have done. Let's be very clear. Drugs are bad. Um, the problem is, is your body's in already such a stressed out state and you're starving yourself. You're, you're, you're fasting. And at a time where you need those micronutrients, you need those vitamins, that fiber, that protein. Protein's a building block. Calories are your, are your natural energy source. Fats keep you satiated. They're good for hormone function. Like all these things, that, these micronutrients, when you're having fruits, the, you know, the, the vitamins, the minerals, the fiber, all this stuff is attacking your body. And it's actually, this type of food is powerful. And this is what allows our bodies to heal and, and be strong. And when you're and when you're fasting and you're used to you know putting crap in your body or abusing your body, I mean that's that's going to put your body in an even more of a stress state. Um, I think fasting might work out some uh, really well for someone whose nutrition is really on point. So you're hearing, hearing these nutritionists now talk about giving their digestive system a break. And, you know, John Berardi, I had him on our muscle and fitness podcast a while ago, and he was talking about how he intermittent fasted. But then at lunchtime, he is having a bowl of greens and grains or sweet potatoes and protein and healthy fats. And he is loading up on those micronutrients and those macronutrients. And then he's doing that again at dinner time. So John's probably you know, one, he's probably getting in the amount of macros that he needs because he's smart and he understands that if I'm going to fast for 16 hours and then I'm going to have two meals and I'm going to eat like a gerbil and I'm going to get 800 to, to 1,000 calories, no bueno. Like I'm going to lose strength. Like it's, it's max. Like, um, Ali, you guys, you guys have a T, you, you, you guys have some sort of a TDE, meaning a total daily energy expenditure. So there is a, there's an amount of calories you need to hit that maintenance level. So you have your REE, which is your resting energy expenditure, your resting energy expenditures. If we're sitting in a chair and we're not moving all day, you're still going to burn an amount of calories. And then you have your non-resting energy expenditure, which is like when you throw a chakra on, it's like, how many calories did I burn? Right? Like through activity. So when you combine those numbers, you make up your TDE. So if you're always in a deficit, if you're always never getting enough calories in, people like criticize when I say, oh, your metabolism doesn't slow down. Yeah, it does. <laughs> like like you, your body adapts. Like your body starts getting used to consuming 800 calories a day. And I can't tell you how many people um, we've increased calories to. And they're like, my clothes are fitting me better and I'm losing weight. And my energy level's better. And I'm like, right. It's like, all right, like, what are you going to like? And, and the majority, <laughs> no, but think about that. Like the majority of the population out there most people aren't consuming enough nutrition. They want to lose weight. What are they going to do? Remove more calories? Like this is why they're not maintaining blood sugar levels. They're, they're crashing. They get emotional. Then they go to emotional eating. Their energy level shit. Their, their sleep quality goes to crap. 
This is why when you see people dieting or, or Max, when you, were, when you were training and wrestling as tired as you were and you weren't eating, it was probably, you were probably waking up every hour to like piss. You were probably like, oh, right, you don't sleep. This is like bodybuilders, competitors, they, they start taking Benadryl around times of contest because they need to pass out. Yes, this is, but this is so obvious, yet everyone out there uses this same fucking drives me crazy. To lose weight, you need to be in a deficit. Like you need to be like, says like, why, why? <laughs> so what are you trying to say? If I gave, so Allie, if I gave you right now a thousand, uh, 3000, let's say this, let's say your, your TDEE, like you burn, let's say you burn 2,300 calories a day. Like you need that to break even. And let's say I feed you 2,300 calories a day through McDonald's, Wendy's and you know, crap, right? Just complete crap. Like processed fries, fried food. And then I, and then I hire you a private chef to come in and, and, and cook for you tw uh, tw uh, 2,300 calories a day, grass fed, grass finished meat or organic vegetables, um, organic fruits, hydration, supplementation. You're trying to tell me that that 2,300 and 2,300 is going to match up like a cow. Like, what is this? Like, this is crazy. Like one's going to affect your body hormonally so much. Your hormones are going to be constantly trying to detox and work and your skin's going to get crappy. And all this, all these things are going to, are going to happen. You're going to be pumping hormones in your body. Like how do they both match up? It doesn't make sense. So the point of my, my rant is a calorie is not a calorie. Like, I don't, I don't believe that. Like, I don't believe that it's not, it's, 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 it's not because I can turn around and I can be on my diet and I could start consuming a specific carbohydrate and retain a little bit more water from it or not be as dry and pick up on that because my body fat's low all year long. Yet, you know, it's, you know, and then that's why, you know, a lot of these competitors stick with the same foods all the time. They're like, why are you only eating sweet potato? Why are you only eating chicken breast? Like, they're like, cause I know this is how I'm going to stay dry and I'm going to stay tight. So their goals are a little bit differently. I'd say bodybuilders aren't necessarily there to be healthy. They're there to look a certain way on stage, but right. I know I'm rambling a little bit right, right now, but I'm, I'm very, it's very upsetting to me when people just think that you have to be in a deficit all the time. Cause if I take someone who is in a deficit, who eats poorly all day long, and then I suddenly get them exercises and I, and I bump their calories up and I give them whole foods, nutrition, and then that becomes powerful and it attacks their hormones. And it's like, it's like these little workers in there, like, come on, let's go, let's get stronger. Let's, 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 you know, balance out that cortisol. Let's, let's, let's pump up that testosterone. Let's, let's detoxify the body. Your body becomes more resilient. Your body becomes stronger. It becomes more of a fat burning furnace. And I think that's the message that I've been living by for the last, you know, 23 years of my career. And it's everything that everything I've handed to my celebrities, I get them ready for movies because being a celebrity trainer, it's like, you can call me what you want. Call me, a, call me a, a horse trainer. I don't give a shit. I, I do what I do. No, seriously. I do I what I do. I train celebrities. No, I train celebrities for, for roles. I've worked with professional athletes. I got to be honest with you. Training celebrities is more challenging. Hands down. Hands down. It's not even, you know, I've trained professional athletes. I've trained uh, celebrities. Not even a question. And I'm going to tell you why. Behavior? Nope. Keep guessing. You their schedule. Blake they're, no, they're, like, no, that, like, oh, not pushback. Oh. You're still dealing, listen, fortunately, all the people I've worked with, they don't have egos. They're all really good people. But yeah, some, you know, you might be dealing with, with egos. Schedule. Schedule. When do you ever hear a game lasting 15, 16 hours? Tom Brady plays on Sunday. He knows his practice schedule all week. Right. He's got one game. He's got practices. They're taking easy on him. He's got his training set up. Like Ryan Reynolds goes off to shoot Deadpool. He's showing up at 7 a.m. He's not leaving until late 9 p.m. Which means now he has to train really early. Oh, he might be away from his family. There's the stress of that. Oh, by the way, it's not for one week. It could be for three, four, five months. Wow. So there's, there's this factor in there now where they have to tie in the fact that they are a real human being. They're working, in my opinion, a work schedule that is way more grueling. It, it is. I mean, listen, being on a football field, getting tackled, I get it. There's a physicality to that. Having to be on stage on Broadway and perform eight or nine shows a week and do the same lines over and over. And then you have your matinees on Saturdays and Wednesdays and you get one day off and that's Monday. And you're doing that for five, six months is brutal, brutal. And you can't, and by the way, there's no rewind button. There's no timeout. Yeah. This is like, oh, shit. did I just say that? Right. Did I just fart on stage? Like we have a problem. <laughs> it's like, you follow what I'm saying? It's like, there's no, there's no rewind button with a lot of stuff. And yes, 
on set, they may be able to reshoot specific takes and, and do those certain things. But yeah, guess what? Now you're slowing down 100, 100 plus people who are all there, you know, depending on you getting through your, your lines and showing up on time and doing all the stuff that, you know, a really good actor is going to do. Um, so that's why, in my opinion, I think, oh, and by the way, off season, off season, what are you, what are you talking What's about? That? What does that mean? Like, like off season? Like if you are an actor who's working up the ranks, you think they're going to turn around and say, oh, uh, I'm going to take five months off in the fall just to kind of be with my family and hang out. <laughs> like, no, like, like Martin Scorsese calls you to do a movie. Like you're going to tell him no. <laughs> it's like, give me a break. Like you're like, I, I have actors that are, it's, it's, it's the premium actors at a certain point. Maybe they start backing off a, a little bit, but all of them are hungry. They all feel like that they got to keep working, that they're all, you know, oh God, you know, things are going good right now. Let's, let's keep our foot on the gas. Like they have a good mentality with it. I'm blessed. The people I work with are phenomenal, but don't think for a second that they have it easy. Like when I, when I saw, you know, one of my favorite people I've ever worked with, Blake, Blake Lively, she's like a, she's like, I call her a brother. She's just so, she's so amazing. She's been incredible. Um, you know, when, when I saw her, you know, after she gave birth to her baby waking up and, you know, being there for her kids at the really early hours in the morning, then getting in a car and shooting out to, you know, shoot something. It's like you, you, you have a respect for these people that most people don't look at like, Oh wow. You're, you're a mom, you're a wife and you're working like that's, and you're working long hours. Oh, and you have to be on set by four or five in the morning to do makeup. Like that's impressive to, to, to me. So that's why I think a lot of people out there don't give them enough credit. They never, they always look at the finished product and they think of the glamor. They don't actually think about what, Oh, and by the way, we have to train also. Right. Like all that, like when, when are we going to train? Like it's, and then it, on set they're you know, they're working out with dumbbells and they're, it's, 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 it's remarkable what, what these people have to do, especially the successful ones. Cause they, they got there for a reason. So, you know, that there's a, there's a work ethic and uh, you know, I feel like no one in Hollywood right now, if you have an attitude, like they're starting to dispose of that. So there's a lot of good ones out there, fortunately. Oh, it's so interesting to hear the inside info on this because you hear a lot of people saying like, Oh yeah, if I got paid to be fit, and I, at all this time as an actor, I would look like Ron Reynolds they, too. They, cause they're, cause they're idiots. <laughs> Tell them, I, I, honestly, they're, anyone who's ever said that's an, an idiot. They're, 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 they're not, the schedule is insane. I've been on set. It's insane. There's, it's like you, you have three, four, five months to shoot a movie. Like you're, you're going to a foreign area. Like you're like, where am I right now? It could be if you're in New York and you're going to Atlanta, you have no idea. Like, what is this? Like, you don't have friends. You don't have family there. Your kids are in school. Like, how can someone even say that? Not take into consideration that, like, wow. Yeah. This, what do you think? They're just sitting on the couch. Like, let's just shoot a fun scene right now. And you know, let's go train at 10 AM. Like there's call times. Like there's, there's, there's budgets like they, they, they have to hit their mark because if they don't, it's going to cost the studio more money. You know, that to me is so when you you're know, training somebody like that, do you build in the idea of like, we'll train this way up until shooting starts and then we'll do this once shooting starts? Like, yeah, I mean, it, like anyone, anyone who turns around and is like, oh, we're, we're going to, you know, we're going to periodize this program. I learned to get rid of that with golfers a long time ago. I started working with golfers when I opened my club 15 years ago. I actually worked with my, my golf. My, my club was originally a golf fitness training facility. My brother was a pro golfer. And um, I tried to periodize programs out 12 months. And the next thing you know, um, like three months in, I'd have a tour player flying to Malaysia and he would get like, <laughs> he'd be puking on the plane. And the next thing you know, like, oh, sorry, he's not making Monday night's workout. And then, oh, wow, now uh, now, now, the weights that you, uh, the percentages you gave him aren't really <laughs> transferring. Yeah. And, you know, I've, I've learned now that like off season, you know, golfers, they, they hardly have an off season. They have like a month, but off season, you can try and do what you can to get stronger. Um, in season, you got to just, in my opinion, you got, you got to keep trying to get people stronger without overreaching. Right. And, and, and you gotta, in a way, use your own readiness tracker to wake up and to say, all right, like, how you feeling? Feeling great. Got a great night's sleep. You want to put your foot on the gas today? Yeah, man, I'm feeling like it. All right. And then it's my job to make sure they don't get hurt and they don't do something stupid. Dave Harbor, perfect example. When I got him ready for Hellboy, he was flying away. He came to me. We had nine weeks. I already knew him. Dave was not a fitness guy. Right. And Dave said, um, Dave was battling some back problems and we, I had my PT assess him and we, and we did our homework and we knew what we were going to do. And I remember having him to do carries like farm farmer carries. I remember he was struggling to pick up 24 kilogram kettlebells struggling because his back was, was, but we were, it was safe. We were doing what we had to do on the final workout that we had. Um, he pulled 400 pounds off the floor on a conventional deadlift, 400 pounds. And he's like, I got a lot more in me. I got a lot more in me. I go, you're done. He goes, <laughs> no, you what don't. are you talking about? I said, I said, why? 
I said, fine, you've got 415, 420 in you. You're going to Bulgaria tomorrow. You're going to be on a plane. <laughs> okay, you're flying to Bulgaria. You're going to be on a fucking plane. You're going to be riding around a horse in Bulgaria. And if for some reason we tweak something, why? Like, it's not going to make you look any different. It's not going to have you perform any different. Like, you're playing with house money. We're done. <laughs> And we, no, 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 it's we're playing with house money. money. We're, we're done. We <laughs> succeeded. It makes a great story. Double 24 kilos, 400 pounds, nine weeks later. Yeah, we, we look pretty good on that one. But the purpose was to send him off to that movie feeling resilient. When he got into that bodysuit, he felt like Hellboy. That was the whole idea behind it. Did you train around a back? How do you train around a back? You're no, talking you, about training around injury, but how do yeah, you listen, around- you, you've got to, you've got to start. I mean, you go through a screening, you go through a movement screening, you, you start selecting movements that are, um, you know, low risk reward. There's other ways we could stimulate the body and get the body strong without like finally, you know, picking the kettlebells off the floor, a little too, little too intrusive, picking the kettlebells off of a bench a little bit better. We're in a safer position there goblet squats till we're blue in the face. His hinge was really good. Um, getting those glutes a lot stronger, getting that core a lot stronger, continuing to work with mobility in the beginning of the workout, always jump throw carry him. So after the mobility, we do some type of a jump or a hop in the beginning, a hop because his back was bad, a throw, some type of a med ball throw and a carry. And then at that point we'd get into our, our strength work, more of our power. Our first lift was more of our power. And then we were running, you know, specific strength work, which was less about circuits because he couldn't lose a lot of weight. He went into this thing at 250 pounds and, um, I actually got a call, I think from the production company three weeks later, they were like, he's losing too much weight. We're going to pull his training. I'm like, he's 249 pounds. Like I know how much he weighs. He weighed this morning. What are you talking about? He's like, he's not fitting in his prosthetic suit. I'm like, I called Dave. I'm like, uh, how's eating going? He's like, good, doing really good. I go, good. Go have some ice cream tonight. (laughs) He's like, what are you talking about? I'm like, in fact, I want you to have ice cream every night this week. Um, after dinner, he's like, are you, are you serious? I'm like, just, just trust me. Like try not to get all that Ben and Jerry's crap with all that, like, like vanilla, like just really simple. But, uh, you know, we, we need to, uh, you know, fatten you up a little bit. And he started laughing about it. I explained to him, but yeah, you got to, every person's different. It's like, what are the goals? It's, it's so, you know, to answer your original question, I'm realizing I rambled so much. I got away <laughs> from it. Do you, do you adjust when they're in season? <sighs> there's so many audibles that are being called. And if out of nowhere, they start giving you a 6 a.m. call time, it's like, all right, you got a 6 a.m. call time. You got in at 10 p.m. Um, is it better for you to wake up at four and train or am I going to give you sleep? And <clears throat> for a couple of days, I'm going to give you sleep. It's just going to be like, listen, man, just just get another hour sleep. Talk to your family, relax. Like if we wake up and we feel good, let's get some stretching in. Um, maybe some of the training happens on the weekend. If they have off on Saturday and Sunday, maybe that becomes day one and day two. Um, maybe a day you finish early, we sprinkle it in there. Maybe the five days a week of training becomes three for a while. Maybe it's about more about maintenance, but if the training starts eating into the main objective, which is, uh, for me, it's always energy and functionality. If the energy and functionality isn't at a specific point, then you're doing the person an injustice, but these, these, these actors and actresses have to look a certain way for the screen. So yeah, they're not going to lose that because they're not slobs and they're not eating complete crap, but you know, we've got to make sure that, um, we're adjusting according to what their body can handle at that time. We need a tracker an energy tracker. What's that? <laughs> we need a, we need a wearable that tracks your energy. Mine? Your, your energy is a, oh, your energy's a 10 right now. You're good. 10, it's and then, always. Gavin <laughs> tries to say that with your body battery, but I don't really know what it's telling you or what it's basing it on. I don't buy it. <laughs> body Wait. battery? I never heard that. That's, that's kind of cool, actually. Yeah, that's what they call it. I think it's like their version of HRV. Hmm. Interesting. I like so it. So who's the, the biggest wuss that you have, the celebrity that you just have to push and won't do anything? Uh, honestly like can we call them on the phone right now no um no (laughs) honestly i've worked with some machines i'll tell you something like uh, i can mention a couple of them you'd be really impressed with you'd be like wow really like one of the toughest um when i say tough i mean from a work capacity standpoint like the one person that can just take an absolute beating and like i have to calm him down is billy crudup you know him you know the actor he's in he's in the morning show he's um he oh, was yeah. uh, almost yeah, yeah, yeah. famous uh did you see the steve prefontaine movie without limits yeah, yeah, yeah watch that movie one of the best it'll be top five to ten best movies you've ever seen you won't go to bed t- tonight it's it's about the olympic star prefontaine not the jared leto one that that one's terrible but um <laughs> look at the look at the billy crude up one and billy is literally 
he trains, he's like Prefontaine. He literally, I'm like, Billy, you gotta, like, we gotta slow down. Like, it's just, he's just go, 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 go. He's a machine, like pouring sweat, like animal. And, and I love the guy. I just shot a podcast with him while I'm working with him for about 10 years. Ryan's, Ryan's a beast also. Seb's a beast. Um, uh, Hugh Jackman was pretty tough. I worked out with him a long time ago. Um, uh, Liev Schreiber's, you know, tough. He loves the box. I'm not a boxing coach, by the way. And, um, you know, John Krasinski, tough i mean emily blunt's a phenomenal athlete blake blake lively is 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 um surprisingly as like one of the best pain tolerances on a pe person i've ever seen like the woman could have hand surgery and come in with like screws coming out of her hand and just train through it like she just she's awesome she's just the best um i'm working with emma i'm working with annie hathaway right now getting her ready for this new uh, we work movie she is an absolute gem Love her to death. Um, I've been blessed. I, I haven't, you know, I haven't worked with anyone. Jake Gyllenhaal, awesome, great endurance. Like him and I would get on the Versa Climber for an hour 15. We would climb 13,000 13, feet, you know, combined back and forth, 100, 100, 100, 100, you know, hour, hour 15, we would go for. Um, Jake was a beast. I mean, these, these, these people were all... Uh, I, I was really... I, I got to be honest. I was really lucky. I, I don't know if I've ever worked with anyone that I disliked. And, um, you know, I, I was really, really lucky. Darn cool. Oh, when you were talking about the carbs that you're eating, it sounds like you have it dialed in that you can tell what works best with your body. Yeah. Have you ever messed around with um, blood glucose monitors? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, uh, God, what's the name of the company? Um, oh God, I I, I just did one recently. It's it's on my phone because it was being measured through it through an app. Um, right, Libra. Link, I'll think of the name. Or, Libra? Uh, Libra? Yeah. Libra. Libra. Yes, Libra. Um, yeah, two weeks in the tricep and yeah, I've messed around with that plenty of times. A company just called me recently because they wanted some feedback on something, but, uh, yeah, no, I, 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 I used it. I've used it several times. Um, my, my body metabolizes carbs pretty well. So I rarely get like a huge spike. Um, I'm kind of staying in that range. So I do pretty well with it, but it's less about the energy standpoint. Cause I know my body does well with carbs. It's more about, aesthetically how my body responds to certain carbs. So I think I can see if I'm having specific type of rices or like my body does really well from a dryness, like sweet potato, um, brown rice. I don't like as much like higher levels of phytic acid and arsenic, but, um, it might, my body will dry out better with brown rice than white rice, white rice. Like, like when I'm, uh, I never bulk, but like when it's off season, I'm trying to get my carbs really, really high. It's easier for me with brown uh, white rice because I can eat like pounds of white rice. It's like so easy for me to get down. The carb content so high. I can crush 100, 100 grams of carbs in one sitting and not even like flinch. So that to me is really good when I'm trying to keep my carbs between five and 600 grams a day. So, uh, but to do that with brown rice, it'd be impossible for me to get it down. But uh, and sweet potato is really hard. Like when I, on the muscle and fitness shoot, I was consuming like 32 ounces of sweet potato a day. And you're eating like, when you have 12 ounces of sweet potato, it's like this big and it's like, oh God, it's like painful to get down. He's, he's like, <laughs> Max yeah, is shaking gross. his head. It sucks. Yeah, it sucks. So, uh, yeah. Sweet potato fries are good. So you're <sighs> like, oh, okay, I could do that. And then you're eating a sweet potato and you're like, there's something's not right here. <laughs> oh my God. It's, it, it's amazing how easy it is to get, um, how easy it is to get like tasty, delicious food down. Um, fortunately right, right now I'm getting my meals sent to me from a, a company called organic crush and trifecta, which I love. And it's like giving me good variety and it's giving me a good micronutrient like variability, um, it's really fun. But I remember one day it was like, I was going to do a refeed and I'm like, I'm just going to call five guys. And so I, I, I called five guys. I haven't had anything bad in a while. And I got like two double burgers and I got like five guys fries. Like when you order a large fries, it's like this much, it's like too much. So I ordered like a regular fries and I ordered like a chocolate shake and I kind of figured it out on my macros. I was like, Oh, that was an easy, I don't eat cheese on my hamburgers. I don't like it. I was like, oh, that was an easy 2,000 calories. <laughs> I was like, yeah. one thing, I'm like, how easy is that? I was no. like, oh, God. You know, I just saved myself all this time. It's because they put their macros on their site. I don't know why they're doing that. They, I think they have to, right? I, don't they have to by law now or something like that? I'm not sure. But I'm like, it's, I was like, oh, this is great. I mean, my, my favorite fast foods, in and out I, 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 I won't eat fast food. I'll eat, like, when I go West Coast, I love in and out because I don't feel like crap from it. And ironically, like I can eat five guys and feel okay from it. Like I just, all that other stuff, I, I can't, like, I just feel sick. Um, and plus after watching those fast food movies where they like expose them 15 years ago and they showed the quality, like remember fast food nation when Bruce Willis was like shoveling.
and into the meat and like he's talking about the patty how i, I was I, I can't i i couldn't have i used to love binging on mcdonald's now i was like i can't even look at it so or that other one where they show up uh they have like a mcdonald's cheeseburger under on a on a trip oh, for like eight God. years and it hasn't degraded at oh, all. Oh God, I mean, terrible. I mean, it's just, it's just awful. I mean, to put that I, in my know. body. Oh God, awful. <laughs> well, okay. So then the healthiest, clearly you've stated for our audience, you heard it here, folks, the healthiest fast food is five guys. <laughs> <laughs> I think on the East coast, if I'm going to have fast food, um, I'm going to order five guys. I just, I don't know what it is. My, my body just does better with it. I don't feel as sick. Maybe it's because I don't really know what's in it. So um, I think we're going to keep it that way because I do enjoy it once yeah. in a blue moon. Ignorance is bliss. Well, Agreed. Max and I were talking about this before we uh, started talking with you. Uh, should we take the, the March superhero challenge? <laughs> I mean, you got to think about your training. I mean, what do you um, what do you guys been doing? I mean, it might be a little different from what you're used to. Remember, this is a dumbbell only challenge. So if you guys have access to... Um, if you guys have access to like a full gym, like you could still do it. And, um, I'll, I'll just give it to you guys. So I'll, um, if you message me later, I'll, um, I'll hook you guys up and just say good things about it. Even if you don't think so, you know, uh, don't, <laughs> don't tell anyone. As influencers, we're required promote, to. Just promote it for me. Um, no, it's actually, right uh, now. That's why I brought it up. All the no, 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 you know, it, it's, 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 I'm, I'm really, I'm really proud of these programs because a program is not easy. There's no such thing as a program being easy. Like I can give, like Max and I can go in and deadlift and we can literally be crawling out of there after just doing one movement. A program's not easy. A program's only easy if you make it easy. And I think the good thing about these exercises, these movements is one, they're effective, they work, they're, they're, they're safe for the majority of the people. Granted, you don't have a surgery or a past injury where they're like, don't press overhead or then we call, um, you know, I, what I like to call it, I stole from Charlie, Dr. Charlie Weingroff, a lateralization. It's not even a regression. We're going to find something else for, for you. Mm -hmm. um, and the community is incredible. So you have me now coaching you every day where you guys can kind of pop on and um, ask your questions on my morning, on my morning call. Um, if you want to do something in person, I, I do a weekly Zoom call where I address the entire group for two hours. I sit there and answer two hours of questions every Wednesday night from 5 to 7 Eastern Standard Time. Every morning you get a video where I'm answering your questions. So you have access to me all week. So, you know, I, I, I hand you a nutrition guide with either a macro of the, the, Mif the Mifflin macro calculator, or we can measure through your palm, your fist, your cupped hand, your thumb. And um, I give about 12 recipes for like dishes that I like to cook. And on top of the 12 recipes, there's about an addition, there's about 22, 23 page nutrition guide that it's yours and you keep it. And every exercise has a video attached to it. I give bonus ab workouts, mobility workouts. I mean, there's a lot of value in there. So um, what I'm most proud about that is that, yes, I've had people with some extraordinary success stories. I had one woman lose a hundred pounds um, just doing the challenges, which is great. She lost about 40 inches. Um, which I was really proud of. Um, I've had some good success. I had one woman, uh, not through the challenges, but I took her from 872 pounds and we got her down to uh, three, she's in the 360s now. So we lost over 500 pounds on her. So I think that stuff for me, transformations are you know right in my wheelhouse. But I think if you're a beginner or I can take like, like a, a, you know, a high class, I have some professional athletes doing it on the side. I can't mention names, but they're like, oh, I'm going to do it. You know, I have dumbbells and it'll be tough for them and they, will, uh, and they will push themselves. And if there's any injury, we can call a lateralization to it. So yeah, if you guys want it, message me and I'll, I'll, I'll get you guys in. Give me some feedback. Great. Oh, I love it. And it starts Monday. 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 Yeah, We're actually, I'll, I'll announce it now. We, we, we close sales because I'm donating $10,000 to the Ronald McDonald house based on this challenge. So I said, listen, we're going to do this challenge with Sebastian Stan. He's going to be one of my zoom call celebrities who come on. Annie Hathaway just agreed to be one of my months. She's going to come do it with me. And we're going to, we're going to donate every month to, um, to a, uh, a charity that the celebrities really tied into. So Seb and I did a lot of work for, uh, oh, Seb did a lot of work, but I, um, I came and participated uh, with some Ronald, uh, some of the Ronald McDonald charity work, and um, we called them up. We're like, "Listen, I'm going to donate ten thousand bucks, and we're going to do a little GoFundMe, and we're going to send money over to help support the kids, and um, let's get people in shape while we're, while we're doing it." So, you know, we had such a great response on it. We wanted to close it down and keep it exclusive, but I spoke to Seb, and we decided to open it this Friday for Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So, hopefully, um, 
Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. So hopefully we'll, we'll be able to bump that up. I'm going to have a very busy month answering questions, but like, like I said, I mean, I love what I do and, uh, this is for a good cause. So, uh, you know, whoever wants to join us, we'd love to have you. Love it. Awesome. All right. Awesome. So where can the fit heads find this? Don Saladino.com. Awesome. That's it. Everything. My Instagram, everything's Don Saladino.com. It's got good SEO. Easy to find. Easy to find. <laughs> Well, this has been awesome. Thank you for fun. joining us. I like talking to you guys. It was fun. I'm building a barn in my backyard right now. I'm about to break ground on. So I'm building a 2,000 square foot barn, 25 foot high ceilings, multi-floor. I fully outfitted it already. I ordered all the equipment from Life Fitness and Hammer Strength. We have 12 foot doors to open up. I got an outdoor move strong jungle gym unit. It's going to be up in the next three to four months. I'd like to have you guys out this summer. We'll do some training. We'll shoot some content. We'll have some fun. Heck Sounds yeah. awesome. I'm so Long sure. Island, baby. Let's do it. <laughs> Absolutely. I'm sold. Done. All right. Well, thank you. And thanks to the Fit Heads. If you are listening on Apple Podcasts, please go rate and review. Check us out on YouTube. Comment below what you want more from us. And we will see you next week. Thanks, guys.